Hello, and my name is Marcus, and welcome to my channel. Transformers 1, we went to go see it uh, an early sneak peek yesterday, and today I am here to give you my thoughts. So the hopes were not very high for this one. I expected it to be uh, for kids. Uh, when I first saw the trailer, uh, my first impression was, uh, this is probably just an introduction story to get more kids to fall in love with the Transformers franchise. Kind of like how the original 1984 movie did for previous generations of society. You know, in that regard, I think it very much succeeds uh, on what it set out to do. It tells of the origin story of Optimus Prime and Megatron, how they started out as best friends and eventually, through betrayal and deception, became sworn enemies. Chris Hemsworth provides the voice of Optimus, or more so Orion Pax, the original name of Optimus before he gained uh, his status as a Prime. He did a fantastic job. You know, I think he did a fine portrayal uh, but doing a young uh, Optimus Prime, obviously nobody is ever going to replace Peter Cullen. You know, that man was born to play Optimus Prime. You know, I haven't have never even heard another person voice the character up until this point until now. And honestly, it sounded like Thor, if I'm being completely honest. Weirdly enough, Thor sounds like a younger version of Optimus Prime. You know, it's such an iconic telling of that voice you know i thought he did a fantastic job you know, it was really cool to see him have uh, doubts or not to uh, be sure of himself you know optus has always seemed like such a suitable leader of the autobots it's kind of weird to see that he had an upbringing or that he was once a child or he had a childhood per se <laughs> it's so weird but he, he did this movie definitely shows the more human side of optimus for sure same thing with megatron provided with the voice by brian t henry if you don't know who he is that is the black dude from the eternals from the mcu so it's kind of the only thing that i really know him from he did a fantastic job portraying a younger megatron actually showcasing that he had a uh, a human side or a personality or a side of light there is always a, a villain origin story nobody just starts off evil well i guess some people do but according to this movie megatron did not it took uh, him to essentially lose everything turn on his fellow autobot and attempt to take over cybertron it was super cool to see the transition happening and it's not just a quick uh, turn either it definitely takes some character development and some uh, happenings to occur that causes him to turn you know he's been mining in uh, a cave his entire life to get the energy source that powers up the autobots and uh, throughout the course of the movie has found out that the leaders uh, of cybertron have been taking that energy source and giving it to the autobots a sworn enemy so with this realization that quickly turns uh, Megatron from Optimus's best friend to wanting to slaughter everybody involved with that betrayal, which of course is not aligning with Optimus's values. So of course that's where the breach in their friendship really starts to take hold. Optimus wants to bring the oppressors to justice. Megatron just wants to slaughter them. And through the middle of all that, we have Keegan's Bumblebee entering the fray as well. He was, again, was just a normal factory bot until Optimus and Megatron found him and pretty much freed him. And he joined uh, the party to reveal the truth of uh, the Overpressors to the Autobots as well. Really enjoyed his character. He was essentially the comic relief for the movie. Uh, I feel like he's kind of the comic relief for all of the Transformers movies. So kind of the norm, I would say. Uh, it was pretty funny as Keegan, the voice that he provided to Bumblebee sounded basically exactly like Toad from Super Mario Brothers. So I found that very funny, especially since they essentially do the same role, perform the same functions for their characters in both movies. Toad is the sidekick to Mario. Bumblebee is the sidekick to Optimus Prime. So <laughs> providing the comic relief and helping to push the storyline along. So very cool. I liked it. Then we have Scarlett Johansson that portrays Alita, basically the only female character in the entire movie other than extras. Um, when she's first introduced, she's kind of that protagonist that's just brask, follows the rules. But when she's introduced to Orion and uh, 
of Megatron. And she really starts to come out of her shell, releases her adventurous personality, and helps the team achieve the common goal of uh, freeing the Cybertron from the oppression that they are under. Next, let's talk about the parts of the movie that I enjoyed the most. Definitely the artwork, the art style, the animated style of the movie. I mean, I would say just picture a Pixar DreamWorks style going into the Transformers. Really, really enjoyed the atmosphere, the models of the Transformers themselves. Definitely nowhere near on the level of uh, the work that went into the Michael Bay Transformer films or the live action Bumblebee. Uh, but, you know, what we have here is just a cool rendition of the characters. You know, I feel like in this one, we don't need to see every wheel, cog, nut, bolt turn as they're transforming. Just, you know, show us what we need to see, and that's good enough. You know, I think. For this one specifically, they needed to focus more on the origins of the characters more so than the aesthetics of uh, the atmosphere. Sound quality, music kept me engrossed, stellar. No real quips or qualms with it at all. Really enjoyed the score of this film for sure. I'm the type of person that likes to listen to movie soundtracks when I'm riding around in my car. I can tell you some of uh, the uh, transformation tracks from this movie is definitely going to be in my playlist for some time to come. Plot. For a movie that is essentially aimed at children, I believe this film does a stellar job of uh, explaining the origins of Optimus Prime and Megatron. They really were very close friends and when they first met. They were kind of both born into mediocrity of just mining the caves of Cybertron to extract the energy source for the Autobots. They both found out together the betrayal of uh, their current life predicaments. And uh, it was the same common goal that they attempted to find uh, together to extract the Autobots out of the slavery style uh, jobs that they were uh, coerced into performing to uh, you know keep them in slavery against the sworn enemy uh, alien race that they were fighting against. But definitely, I'm um, seeing them fight against the main antagonist of the movie. No spoilers, but obviously it is Sentinel Prime. It's very unfortunate that he portrayed uh, all of the original uh, Primes from the world of Cybertron. You know, they essentially go through an adventure-style quest to help reveal the truth of Sentinel Prime basically coercing and enforcing uh, slavery on the rest of the Autobots to extract the energy source to give to the aliens, which is threatening to destroy the planet. They succeed in showcasing this revelation to the rest of the Autobots, and it is so it's so cool. The fight scenes in this movie, specifically Elita and. Uh, uh, Optimus, for sure, have some of the best fight scenes. Uh, you know, Bumblebee has some double swords that he is specifically dangerous with. Find it kind of interesting when they got their cogs that causes them to transform, that they just automatically knew how to use them. So I guess that's a thing. I'm not really that invested in the Transformers lore like that. But, you know, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Do the cogs just have the information to gives them the ability to just fight like that? I mean, of course, it gave them the you know necessary weapons and whatnot. But does it give them the knowledge of martial arts and whatnot as well? Pretty cool. Most definitely my favorite uh, fight scenes in the movie is Megatron versus Sentinel Prime. That was a super cool fight. Just seeing Megatron really roll into his destiny of being the antagonist that he was destined to become. Him uh, beating Starscream and taking over uh, the, the Cybertron uh, Legion of Darkness or something. can't remember the exact uh, term of what they were called beforehand, but obviously uh, this group eventually becomes the Decepticons, but seeing him be able to overpower Sentinel Prime once he gets his cock is super cool. And then, of course, the best fight in the movie by far is Optimus versus Megatron. 
Essentially, Megatron has beaten Sentinel Prime. He's about to deliver the killing blow, but in a last ditch effort to save his friend from himself, Optimus steps in front of the final blast, essentially sacrificing himself to save Megatron and Sentinel, and theoretically and physically. It was pretty cool. And as he's falling into the depths of Cybertron, the primes of the past, the ancients, uh, save him from oblivion and give him the allspark due to his sense of bravery and make him into their version of the newest prime. At this point, he really does turn from Orion Pax into Optimus Prime. Very cool. It was absolutely exquisite is the word that I would use of him flying back into onto the surface of Cybertron to have a final confrontation with Megatron where he expresses his disappointment in Megatron's betrayal and uh, his last ditch effort to save his friend. But at this point, Megatron has fully turned from best friend to antagonist to full on arch nemesis villain. It's super cool, man. Really quick within that hour and a half time frame for the movie but i really did enjoy it it was very cool to see how it all came to be you know i really like this retelling of their origin story i'm not sure if it had ever been told before how they came to be but if this is the official origin story of optimus prime and mega trine i really did enjoy it like i said i went into this movie not having high hopes just i've always been a fan of the transformers at least since the bay films uh, the original cartoon came out before i was born 84 i was born in 88 so it was more of an 80s kids uh, cartoon you know i'm more of a 90s kids ninja turtles power rangers etc i certainly feel like this movie did its job of showcasing its uh, respect for the older generation definitely uh, showcasing some of optimus classic weapons the axe the gunship that he wields uh, megatron's gun the double blades for bumblebee and then it does a great job of trying to introduce the franchise to a new generation audience as well my eight-year-old daughter really enjoyed the franchise as well she was already a fan of the characters but you know she didn't really know the story of how they came to be I felt like this was a perfect introduction to the characters optimus and megatron for her get her engrossed in the franchise as well so the movie most certainly succeeds on that standpoint overall judgment is it's great man it's a good popcorn flick now does this have me ready to go out and buy you know hundreds upon dollars worth of toys of from the movie no I wouldn't go that far. However, you know, I feel like I do need to add an Optimus and a Megatron uh, to my collection. You know, I'm an action figure collector. If you didn't, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man, and I really did enjoy this movie. My family enjoyed it. So that makes me a happy camper for sure. I hope this is not a one and done. I would love to see a sequel, possibly a War for Cybertron follow-up to this movie. I think that would be really cool. I think I really do enjoy watching the Transformers without the human counterparts to help try to push the storyline along. I like the focus mainly being put on the Transformers this time. That was definitely a nice change of pace. So okay that is going to do it for this one my friends so if i had one go with this video it was to convince you that you really need to go see this movie so hopefully i succeeded in that today so if you've seen the movie already you enjoyed it do me a favor hit that like button if you didn't enjoy it still hit that like button anyways and express in the comment section below what you didn't like about it so as always thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed this content maybe consider subscribing to the channel you can follow me at youtube.com slash 79 and also on facebook and instagram and tiktok we tend to review the majority of the blockbuster movies including disney marvel star wars dc etc etc okay my friends as always i will see y'all on the next one and catch y'all later bye